All right, creating your test banks or your tests to be used in the respondents form proto for delivery into the Blackboard here at Sam Houston is actually pretty simple and straightforward. You do have to follow a couple of formatting standards that it requires simply because it's a software and it looks for certain programming. And I know that word programming can be a little intimidating. All it simply means is that when you number your questions, they need to end with a period or with a bracket not both, one or the other. I like to just simply stick to the period because it's straightforward. And then you need to give it answer choices. So the first ones that we show and the most commonly used would be multiple choice and true and false. The key thing here is that you put the asterisk sign, come here and see if it'll highlight here, in front of the correct answer choice. And as you'll notice when you open the start file that I've provided for you, you've got quite a few options you can do. You can get pretty in depth in some of the requirements it has for it. You can add in different images that you want to use. You can bold, underline, etc. There's no problem with that. You can add images of any shape, shape, or form that you would like to use. You can come in and you can do tables without a problem. And you can use plenty of images. Also, just to show you, to do a true and false, I might say, um, Respondents will let you use this word to create tests. And then what you would do, A, true, B, false, or yes, no, etc. And then again, put that asterisk in front of it. And then, of course, go through and make sure everything is numbered correctly. You do have more choices available for you other than multiple choice and true and false. You can do a multiple response where there's multiple answers that could be picked. So you would go right in here and apparently it's Albert Mitchelson and Edward Williams both could do this. You also have matching. So you can match and say so morally and the speed of light, Einstein theory, right? Marconi radio waves. The thing here to remember is you have to have a minimum of three things to match and you must use that equal signs in between the two. Also anything that's special other than multiple choice and true and false you have got to tell the type. So you have to say type colon it's a little programming language and then MT full matching. This one is for short answer type is S and you would give it short answers and you would tell it that these are any of these combinations would be correct. You even have a paragraph option where you can go on and put everything that you have here that what you're looking for. I would like to recommend that you avoid the short answer and the paragraph simply because usually this will require you to go into Blackboard and do some more grading. And the whole point of quizzes and tests like this is so that you don't have to spend all your time doing the grading. It's just like a Scantron, it does the grading for you. You would save any kind of essay, writing enhanced, et cetera, that you want to do. You want to make it either an assignment that they submit and turn into you via the turn it in so we can check for plagiarism, or you might make a wiki, or you might make a discussion board about it. So instead of doing like a short answer, I would actually do like a discussion board topic for the week and I would ask them who is known as the father of television and give me some examples and, and examples of how he's been useful, some things that he's done, etc. And so each student is required then to go in and add some kind of input into the discussion. And that's a much more accurate assessment of their knowledge and their reading than it is to simply give them a short answer. Just being brutally honest. So your most commonly used ones will be, of course, the multiple choice, which you do not have to put a type in, your true and false, which you do not have to put a type in, and then you would get into your multiple responses. So if there's more than one correct answer, that would be the type colon MR, or your matching, which would be the type colon MT. When you get done, make sure you save this and get into the habit of proper file management. and save it into your drive, into your folder. And if you don't have a folder credit, create, a, create a new folder and title it however you would understand typically. And I'm just going to say five, six. Just for an example,
and I'm totally making this up, but I'm just so that I can show you, you would do a safe, you'd give it a title. I would usually stick to the digits and then this explanation for the course. And then organize it and have it set up so this might be your week one. And you'd put this quiz into that week one folder, and that's where you would save it to go get it. And then you repeat this process for all the weeks. So if you've got tests that you've already created, oh crud, I have to start all over again. No, you don't. All you have to do is make sure that it follows this format, that it's got the number, period, asterisk in front of the correct answer. That's all you have to do. And if it's true and false, the same thing, except for you have to say A true, B false, put an asterisk in front of it. If you want to use multiple responses, the same thing. All you have to do, remember, is to put above it the type colon MR. You want to use multi matching, type MT. And if you want to use the short answer in the paragraph, you can. Choice is yours. But remember, again, you'll have to go on and do this grading. It's not going to really completely auto-grade this. I've, I've found that that's not really the best option for using it. All right. Next video, I'm going to show you how to get this test and to respond to this.